What is up guys, Taiki here, and in this video, I wanna go over why I view Tricelaris to be a value farm in this current market environment. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. None of this is financial advice. So Tricelaris is the number one uh, automated market maker, decentralized exchange in the Aurora ecosystem, right? Which is Nier's L2. And I'll kind of go over why later, but for you to understand um, why I believe this is a value play, um, I need to give some background on the current market environment and historical context on how uh, these tokens tend to perform um, in other ecosystems. So, you know, obviously the markets are red. Is, is it over, right? Like, is it over? Like, is, is it gone? Is, is it done? Do we have to wait a year? Uh, to be honest, um, I don't really believe in like uh, like a minus 80, 90% bear market. Um, I do think that some tokens will just go down 90% or whatever because, you know, they're like, they have no, they have no utility. Um, I think it's time for, in, in this type of environment, uh, to shift your mindset from, you know, risk on to, you know, farm to accumulate. And that's kind of how I view the current situation. Um, even if we're still in a bull market, right? Um, there's no way for anyone to know. Um, you, know you, sh you shouldn't expect some miracle V-shaped recovery. If it happens, then I'll like, you know, like, what the hell? Like, I'll be happy anyways. But, you know, I'm like, realistically, I'm expecting sideways chop. Maybe we go down a little bit more. T to be honest, no one really knows. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, in this environment, people want cash, and the, the the easiest thing for people to sell first are like the Ponzi coins, right? Like if you've been farming a Ponzi, even participating in a Ponzi, uh, and and you need cash, right? You're scared. You're gonna sell the Ponzi's off first before you sell Bitcoin or ETH. Um, so I think you know these tokens with like zero or very low, like very few fundamentals, um, they're gonna suffer in this environment. And you want to focus on assets with some chance of fundamentals that you want to accumulate. Okay, so farming to accumulate. Um, has been my main strategy for the past couple of months, but uh, I, I think it becomes more important in this type of context, right? Like everyone's bearish. Like, do you really think that like the 69th ohm fork on uh, Avalanche is going to do that well, right? Probably not, right? Probably not. Um, it's good to identify assets that might not be doing that well, but maybe assets that you can expect to perform better in the future. So for me, those assets are assets like Spell, right? I have, I've been farming Spell for a few months. Um, it's not an asset that I want to buy with like my actual dollars. But, you know, if I can passively earn it at like 15% APY, APR, um, you know, it's just on AVAX or Phantom, I'll do it, right? I think Jewel is also something that's really surprised me in terms of like how resilient it's been. Um, yes, I totally believe in like the fundamentals and like the Ponzinomics that, uh, of the tokenomics and whatnot. Um, but the emissions are so high, right? So, um, and people are up so much that like I, I would have expected more people to like, you know, sell some Jewel. Um, but it's only down like 15%, which is like nothing in this current environment, right? Um, it went from like a dollar to twenty-two dollars, and now it's like nineteen dollars. At least at the time of uh, recording, given my Taiki U4 indicator, maybe maybe you know it, it goes down more, um, or maybe this is my despair indicator and it, it pumps right after. Who knows? Um, but you know, just farming to accumulate assets, right? Um, not really expecting instant like wealth, right? Um, but to more position yourself for uh, a, a bull market later on or a bullish phase later on, right? And maybe you can take more profits or something. Um, you know, just manage risk. That's that's the humble farmer, uh, humble farmer army way. So, what other assets are there with a good risk reward profile? Because every, everything in crypto, you should view uh, based on risk reward, right? Like I would have much rather get into an asset that have a two x upside with like let's say a twenty percent downside than something with like you know hundred x upside but like ninety nine percent of the time it goes to zero, right? Um, I, I feel like the, the former uh, risk reward uh, trumps like whatever, you know, like random shitcoin altcoin uh, that look, looks attractive on that particular day. Um, and I think the goal of crypto is to just simply survive, right? And just accumulate assets um, that people want in the future. So upon thinking this, um, I feel like Tricelaris, um, which this, this is the first time I kind of talk about this on my channel, but you know, I, I talked about the potential near rotation in Q1, you know, um, and then when I mentioned Q1, right, I mean, Q1 is January, February, March, right, and we're in the first week of January, so um, I don't necessarily think that, you know, you have to buy near now or, you know, stuff, stuff like that, but, you know, it's something that people should keep track of because I think that ecosystem is going to be built out uh, throughout you know, Q1, um, and Trisolaris as the number one DEX is going to be an important component of that if the ecosystem, you know, gets built out uh, the way I think it's going to be, uh, so... Why try Solaris, right? Why try Solaris? Why that token over Near? Why that over Aurora or any other altcoin? Um, and the reason for this, right, and choosing Try, right, and why I think it's a value play is you kind of have to look at historical context and look at the L1 rotation playbook. Now, I argue that the L1 rotation is getting shorter and shorter, right? Um, I feel like 
you know, we can't keep on doing the L1 rotations forever, but I do think that it still has legs, right? Um, at least in Q1. I could be wrong, right? But that's one of my predictions, but who knows? Who, you know, I, I'm, I'm wrong all the time. But anyways, historically, um, I, I've been doing the L1 rotation game for almost a year now, and what, what, what happens historically is that the ecosystem altcoins just outperform initially, right? In the initial, I guess, pump, um, when the initial like real rotation happens. And then after that initial pump, the L1 token outperforms as a flight to safety. Um, and you can kind of look at historical context, right? Um, I often talk about QuickSwap versus uh, the Matic token, right? QuickSwap went up a lot and then, you know, QuickSwap dumped like 80% and then Matic went up like 4x or something. Um, similarly, um, looking at the AVAX ecosystem, like, this is the chart of Trader Joe. Obviously, you know, I mean, th this chart is like, you know, pretty ridiculous um, because, you know, it went from like 2 cents to like $4 at the actual a absolute peak. But you can kind of see that, you know, this is like a exaggerated version where in August, right, this thing went from three cents to like almost three dollars, and then now it's like not doing much, right? It's just like going sideways. Um, so they outperform a lot, and then they kind of go sideways, right? Um, and Joe has tremendously out underperformed the AVAX token, right? So has Yodiak, right? Yodiak went from a thousand dollars, like fifteen thousand dollars, stayed there in like August and September, and just like dumped perpetually. And you know. AVAX did really well in August, right? Uh, it went from like $10 to like $50, $60, dumped a lot. Um, and then, you know, it's just grinding up, right? Um, and you can kind of see that like in August and September, yes, like AVAX went from 10 to 70 or 80, but Yieldiac and Joe uh, performed tremendously. But in the month of October and November, while Yieldiac dumped, while Joe dumped, AVAX went up and put in a 2X, right? So historically, um, and you can, you can look at other, eco other ecosystems too, but it seems like altcoins outperform and then the L1 token outperforms just because you know people are like less risk averse after you know these altcoins go on a crazy pump. So my play um, has been to you know bet on the ecosystems um, altcoins and you know if if and when the rotation happens, rotate back into your. That's kind of how I'm thinking about it. Um, it's not guaranteed to happen, right? And I might have to sit on my hands for a month or two, right, waiting for this rotation to happen uh, to begin with. But you know I feel comfortable farming. Try. Which I consider to be a value play. So um, when I say value, I just think that you know it's something that has um, decent upside, but not that much downside. Of course, the downside is it goes to zero if it gets exploited or rugged or something. Um, but you know, I think I think try is like the safest bet <laughs> out of any ecosystem play right now. And the reason why I think consider it to be really really good risk reward is just by looking at historical context on how the number one dex token on an evm chain has outperformed or has performed uh, in the past and i say evm because i feel like you know these are all uniswap and like sushi swap forks um so i think it's good to compare like apples to apples right i don't want to compare you know this to like a random other other exchange like on solana or like you know that's built on rust or you know like terra like astroport or like osmosis on cosmos or something so no, I talked about QuickSwap first, right? And anyone that's used QuickSwap understands that like ever since this thing first launched in like February or March, the UI hasn't changed, right? I mean, there are like some additional features, but like no one gets out of bed to like buy QuickSwap, right? Like no one gets excited, like, oh my God, like I can't wait to use QuickSwap. I can't wait to buy the Quick token. Like, like no, no one, like no one thinks that way. However, the token still did pretty well, right? I mean, it went from roughly $30 million market cap to like 200 million at the absolute peak. Um, well, I, I guess the absolute peak was like 280, but you know, the the, the pump that everyone cared about was a here, right? When it gets like over $200 million market cap. And then the token has not, has not done anything since. We look at Spooky Swap, which is the number one DEX in the Phantom ecosystem. And also it got to roughly a $200 million market cap. Um, I argue that Spooky is actually like better than QuickSwap. So maybe it deserves a premium and maybe it's undervalued. Who knows? Um, I don't I don't own any, uh, to be honest, but um, you know, number one DEX gets to roughly a $200 million market cap, right? Historically. How about Pangolin, right? I mean, no one cares about Pangolin, right? And Pangolin's a meme, right? Uh, sorry, sorry, Pangolin team, but you know, it, it's a meme. Uh, but even Pangolin, right, um, in, in August got to almost a $200 million market cap, right? Um, roughly 150 to 200, right? Um, some, somewhere in that range. So you can kind of see that like, even if a DEX um, isn't like revolutionary and like, it doesn't change like, you know, the, the new world order, it still gets to nine figure market caps, right? Historically, right? As long as it's being built on an ecosystem with actual users. Obviously, the the most like the the hyper bull case is Joe, uh, which got to half a billion dollar market cap. Um, but you know, if you had the idea of you know getting out selling Joe at like two to three hundred million dollar market cap, you still done pretty well for yourself, right? Because the top of Joe was roughly like four to five dollars, um, and ever since the initial pump, um, 
you know, in August and September, the the the, the Joe token hasn't done that much. Um, so, you know, for me, it's, I think it seems reasonable to expect to try to get to at least a hundred million dollar market cap, right? It, it seems reasonable. Um, obviously, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but looking at historical context, um, and I think being historically correct is like the best way to be correct, right? Instead of saying like, oh my god, like this thing is so good, it's going to be half the market cap of this coin, or I mean, it's it's so good, it's going to be two x valuation of that coin, right? Um, sure, I mean that that might work in a bull market, but under these conditions, I think it's better to stick to the data and to be more factually correct than to just like write out a hopium all the way to the bank. Um, I took this screenshot like half an hour ago. Um, the circulating supply there, market cap roughly 35 million. So, you know, I, I think from a value perspective, I think it can do pretty decently, right? Maybe the market cap can go up 3x at least, right? And then maybe the hyper bull case is like a few hundred million dollar market cap. But you don't even have to wait until then. You can just like take profits along the way. And just because I, I you know, you also have to understand that TRI is an inflationary token, right? It's like new emissions every single day. Um, so just because I think the market cap might go up 3x doesn't mean that the token is going to go up 3x, right? For example, if the circulating supply doubles and the TRI token stays constant, right, the market cap will double, right? Because market cap is the, is, you, you take the price, the, uh, multiply it by the uh, circulating supply, right? And the, the UI is okay, right? And it's not like crazy. It's, it's not like, you know, like, oh my God, like the best thing ever. Um, but you know, Space Man, and like it's, they're, in, they're in space, right? I mean, it, it's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, and the farms are decent too. Uh, there's dual reward pools uh, that pays in Tri and Aurora. There's also other decent farms for, you know, like other pairs, I guess. And there are more. Um, I just couldn't get everything in the screenshot. Stable coin farms, near farms. And if you expect the, you know, if you, if you, if you expect these assets to do decently well, um, I think these are decent farms, right? For me personally, I'm in the Tri near and the Tri USDT pool, right? Um, just focusing on the APR farming to accumulate and, you know, just taking profits over time. And uh, in terms of safety, right, you always have to think about safety and nothing is guaranteed because it's crypto, I'm um, DeFi. Um, but, you know, one of the reasons I feel comfortable is I heard that, you know, I, I hear that the Tri-Sellers team is pretty strong. Um, and also um, they're getting, um, and Dragonfly Capital, which is a reputable VC in the, in, 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 in the industry, will be supporting them with liquidity provision and advisory, right? So they're not necessarily like buying the token, but, you know, they're essentially farming, right? They're putting their dollars uh, into this application. So if they're allocating, you know, whatever, like maybe uh, like, like seven or eight figures of their capital into tri -Solars, maybe that ra like raises more confidence, right? To be honest, they're probably in the stable coin farm, right? They probably like not, they're, they're probably like delta neutral in the sense that they're not taking on that much exposure and risk, but you know, it creates some level of confidence. Um, and this is the, one of the discord posts by Dev. Um, he mentioned that, um, you know, team and advisor tokens are going to be remain unlocked, sorry, remain locked until March 20th. Um, you know, just to instill more confidence, I guess. So all the price action that you'll see, um, you know, it's purely from some market participants, right? It's not really from like the team isn't selling, the advisors aren't selling, and you know, it sounds like they're in for long term. So hopefully, right? Hopefully. And an another interesting data point that I want to highlight is that um, there's been, you know, obviously UST and Luna, um, they want to be more liquid on the other chains, right? Um, so. There was this proposal passed by Terraform Labs and uh, that community about like creating incentive programs for um, seven Solana projects. So uh, th th it's like five Solana projects and two Aurora projects, right? So um, and they also typoed projects. So um, you know it's <laughs> it's it's kind, of, it's kind of funny. But you know this proposal passed two days ago, um, and in this uh, there are two protocols from Aurora that's included. So Tricelaris, right? Um, they're going to receive roughly quarter million dollars worth of Luna rewards which in the grand scheme of things is not that much, um, but maybe that creates excitement, right? And maybe that instills more confidence. Rose is another asset that I own. I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. It's a really, really speculative asset. Um, you have to do any research, but they're also gonna receive some lunar incentives. So maybe that's something to look into, right? You can, it, it's, it's like a curve fork um, that has advocate average features. Um, but you know, um, I, 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 th I think you're gonna have to wait for some time for Rose to play out. Um, and I, I, think, I think Rose is something that can, do really well, or it can go to zero, <laughs> as, as, as with most uh, most altcoins. Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, Tricelaris, um, this is, is an example of using historical data to make a good risk reward bet on an altcoin. Um, high floor, medium ceiling, right? Um, and obviously the ecosystem that's built, uh, that's, that, that it's built on has to have activity, right? Uh, because something like UbeSwap um, is a DEX token on Celo, right? 
and there's like not that much activity on the seller blockchain uh if i were to be frank right and i don't, I don't really know what the catalysts are i guess like always coming soon but you know i, I guess like the floor I, I would consider the floor of tricellaris to be something like this um and even if i'm wrong right maybe i'll lose a little bit of money but i'm farming it so i'm not going to be that upset um, and the upside is a few hundred million dollar market cap, right? Um, and maybe you can see the base case is hundred million dollar, right? To be humble and then take profits along the way or something. Um, you know, so that, that's kind of how I think about it, right? Yeah. So um, how, how, should, how should you think about this? So, you know, if you're bullish on the near ecosystem and you want to be like risk on, right? Maybe that's not the best time to be risk on right now, but maybe you can just like bet on the on the ecosystem tokens, right? And uh, just hope to rotate back into near or something, right? Uh, as part of the L1 rotation playbook. High beta strategy, right? Maybe 50-50 exposure, near and some other altcoins, right? So maybe this um, is more attractive for people. Uh, I, this is kind of what I'm doing, I guess. Um, I'm farming try near and try USDT, and then just take profits over time, right? That's that's decent. Um, maybe humble strategy, denominate near. Um, obviously, you know, like I'm, I, I'm not claiming that near is guaranteed to go up. Um, I feel like it. I feel like it's. You know, I feel like it's. It's an asset that's going to be pretty strong. But you know, you can accumulate near, maybe use near uh, as collateral when uh, money markets come out, um, or even just like farm with it or something, right? Um, and I think it's fine, right? Um, risk is a spectrum. You have to farm according to your risk spectrum. Uh, up to you how you want to allocate. There's also the Aurora token. I think it's probably going to do well. And I took the screenshot like a few days ago, so it's probably like down a little bit, but. Um, I, I don't really see that much utility in the Aurora token, um, but I mean, it's all about narratives, right? Like who knows, maybe maybe it'll pump, who knows? Um, it's, it's already up like what, two, two and a half X or something, um, but it, it, it is what it is. So I kind of consider risk to be like near the safest, try next safest, um, and then the other altcoins. And safe doesn't mean that it's gonna go up. Uh, safe just means uh, for the amount of risk, like, safe just means that like, you know, it's probably not gonna go to zero, right? Um, but there's no way for me to know. So that's kind of the thing about it, and that's why I view Tricellaris to be a value play, right? I think it's something with limited downside, with decent upside, and you know, if we're in this environment of, let, let, let's live in a simulation where the market goes sideways for two months, right? And like, like the altcoins, I mean, like nothing really does any, uh, does anything. You know, I feel like no one's gonna regret like farming try, right? Even if it stays at like the same market cap. Yeah, um, but who knows? Maybe there's opportunity cost. Uh, but you know, this is kind of the way I think about the markets um, recently. Um, just minimize risk, and even if I am risk on, um, understand or ha have a ha have a fundamental understanding of like why I'm taking that much risk. So thank you guys for watching, um, and have fun farming out there. Um, as I announced in the last video, um, the price for the Discord is going to go up to um, $100 um, starting Monday. Um, whatever you, rate you sign up as uh, is locked in, right? So if you sign up right now, um, you know, the $70 a month is locked in. Um, and, you know, um, that's kind of how I'm going to uh, uh, I, I, I do, do this. So thank you guys for watching. Have a good one. And let me know what your thoughts on are, are on try. Um, hope everyone's doing okay. Watch your health factors. Uh, and yeah, have a good one.